Hello everybody, I'm Katrina Morton, I'm a sensory motor psychotherapist and today I'd like to talk to you about hypersensitivity. It's something that we don't really give enough attention to and I think for a lot of people they don't even know it's a thing. We've got the same body, brain and nervous system that our ancestors had. There's not been an awful lot of evolution with this system that we have here. And we were designed to live in a natural environment with plants and rocks and trees and birds. And while those things have evolved and changed over time, we are natural creatures. We relate extremely well to nature, the ions in the grass and the sea. It's very, very nourishing for us. What we weren't designed for was a world full of technology. And with my clients, a lot of them experience, they're not sure what it is at first, but when we explore it and tease it out, they are very, very oversensitive to external stimulation, especially of an artificial kind. Too many bright lights, the wrong kind of light, very bright, vibrant colours, a lot of fast movement. And it can have a very, very profound impact on us because it, it kind of assaults all of our senses. And while most of us don't really pay any attention, we might not even be aware of too much overstimulation, we might notice things like, oh, when I've been working on my laptop, my computer, for a long time my eyes can get a bit tired or I can get a headache or I just feel a bit funny but it can have a much more profound effect on our senses if we've got really loud clashing noise then that can be quite overwhelming when visually there's too much going on that can be very overwhelming and it can be very disorientating it can affect the way that we feel. For some people, it makes them feel really anxious. For others, it feels really overwhelming, disorientating. And if people are prone to be slightly dissociative, then it might just make them shut down a little bit. Just withdraw, not be quite so present. Because that's a brilliant coping mechanism. If this is too loud and jangly and movie, then if we can just disconnect ourselves a little bit from it, it can ease the impact of it. However, it makes us feel like we're not really there, we can be a bit brain foggy, we can feel a little bit unstable, unsteady, and when we've pulled back and disconnected, then the people that are around us, we can't connect as well with them. We're herd creatures. People around us should, especially you know the, the right kind of people, should make us feel more safer, more included, just a bit more secure. But if we've disconnected from them, then people can feel a little bit confusing, a little bit threatening. So the whole thing kind of takes on a life of its own. I always noticed when I go shopping, especially with my daughter, because she's quite a shopper, and we go to these big shopping centres, I find those places really, really overwhelming. And what I notice is my sense of direction, which isn't brilliant at the best of times, goes completely offline. So I come out of a shop and I literally have no idea if I came from that way or that way. And if left to my own devices, I head off in the wrong direction. And it really, really messes with my ability to make sense of things and navigate. And for me, it's just too much noise, it's too many people, people moving around, coming backwards and forwards, too many coloured lights, too many colours. And I know that I'm somebody that loves colour. I've got a lot of colour around my home, but I'm very careful with my colour. I like colour with plain things. And so what is really helpful is to know how does it affect us? Does it affect us? And how can we tell? For some people, it shows up in things like they don't like driving at night because lights are coming towards them 
and they just think, I just don't like driving at night. But actually, it's the fast, sudden movements and it's the brightness of the lights coming at us. And these are artificial lights. We are designed to cope with the sunlight and the moonlight and stars and that kind of natural light. The antidote for this, one is finding out how overstimulating things are for you. What's your level of sensitivity? It's different for everybody, but I know that this is something that a lot of my clients are affected by, that it is a really big deal for them. And if they have too much, then it makes them feel extremely anxious. And if they feel extremely anxious, they're a lot less inclined to want to go out and to do anything. Well, the antidotes for this are looking at a plain wall. If you're feeling overstimulated, then take down the stimulation. Reset your nervous system and let everything calm. Look at plain things. Listening to certain kinds of music, in particular classical music, and in particular things like harp music that's very melodic. Avoid any kind of great big clashy Rachmaninoff type things but very gentle classical music. It's not just that it's nice music, it resonates in our inner ear and it actually has a very calming effect on our nervous system. So we can change the stimulation, the stimulus from very man-made, very artificial, very jangling crazy to things that are a lot more just naturally soothing for ourselves. Nature brilliantly energizing and restorative and regulating because we're naturally designed to connect with nature. There's no amount of different colors. I'm looking out the window as I'm saying this. There's no amount of difference and variation in nature that is overwhelming to our senses. We relate to it all. It doesn't jangle with us. We're designed to do it. You know, we can be around really loud crashing waves and it's really different to loud banging music. And our body is a very sensitive system. And so every opportunity we get, we should go out and sit on the grass. We should sit beside water. If we can get to the beach and the sea, brilliant. But just being around natural things is very, very calming to our nervous system. And especially for people that live in cities, I love London and I love going into London, but I can feel my nervous system pretty jangly when I've been there for a while. But London's got great big open park spaces, which is wonderful, huge green areas. So just think about getting a balance of plainness, calmness, the right audio music, the right colours, and every now and again just give your nervous system a little break. Look at plain things, listen to quiet things. If you've got some crystals, hold some crystals. All these things that are very, very natural and very tuned into our nervous system. We can live in a very fast, very impacting environment and actually on a cellular level, on a muscular level, it really does affect us. I went to a kinesiology demonstration and talk and it was amazing because kinesiology does a lot of muscle testing and so they test your muscles and see what gives your body strength and what gives it weakness. Sorry kinesiologist, I know there's a massive more amount to it than that, but to break it down on a really simplistic level. And what he did was he had a little speaker and he placed it on the person's abdomen and played a kind of music. So it was very, very quiet. Nobody could hear it. They couldn't hear it. And then he tested the muscles. And when he played one kind of music, the muscles were great. It's like, oh, your body really responds to that. He played another kind of music. It didn't tell anybody what it was. He did some muscle testing and there was no resistance. It was really, really weak. The first one was classical music. I think it was Beethoven. And the second one was heavy metal and the body responded. 
while we all have different tastes and we all enjoy all these different things, just give a moment to think about your nervous system. And, you know, if you've been to a concert, if you've been in a really stimulated environment, just think about giving your brain, your body, your nervous system a little chance to wind down, recharge itself, settle and get something resourcing in. I think you'll find that your nervous system and your whole body health will help you and in ways that you won't always notice at first. We never think about our cellular health, our energetic health, but we consist mostly of water and energy. And it's just worth really bearing in mind when we're looking for a healthier lifestyle, want to feel good about ourselves, just think about the environment that we're putting our bodies into and giving it something to counteract it, getting a balance. And I'm pretty sure your body, your brain and your nervous system and your moods and your emotions will thank you. So I hope that was interesting and made a lot of sense. If you like this video, give us a big thumbs up, subscribe to our channel below and I look forward to seeing you all very soon. Bye.